right, so to get started on our Ma Lai Gao cake, we're just going to use an 8 inch basket steamer here. It's a bamboo steamer, but if you don't have a bamboo steamer, you can absolutely just use a 8 inch round caking, uh, caking, <laughs> baking pan that you use for cakes. And you could, if you are using this, just make sure to butter it and flour and line it as well. Probably actually you don't need to flour it, just butter it, line it, and set that aside. But for me, I'm just using our bamboo steamer here. So this is also eight inches. And just fit it into the little edges, crevices as best as you can. You can also cut off any excess paper here. So once that's fitted in, you just want to set that aside. No need to grease that at all. So I'm going to whisk everything together. Now this recipe is different than a um, some other no yeast ma lai gao or Malaysian uh, sponge cake. Got a little shell there because it does use the yeast. And I think traditionally, from what I read online, um, the ma lai gao, I don't know if it was in China or Malaysia, but they traditionally used a naturally leavened um, cake or like, you know, leavener. So similar to like a sourdough starter, basically. That's the way of, that's the way of like old school natural leavening. I'm just going to add our evaporated milk. Now, if you don't have evaporated milk, you can probably use just regular old milk. Now, I'm just adding our three tablespoons of a neutral flavored oil, something like a canola, a grape seed, a vegetable, um, or even like a light olive oil will work here as well. Just make sure it's not too strongly flavored. You want to save that good oil for salad dressings and like raw applications. So now I'm just kind of eyeballing one teaspoon, or actually no, I lied, two teaspoons. I'm just going to use the rest of my, my vanilla there. Two teaspoons <laughs> of pure vanilla extract. So I just added my one teaspoon of yeast here. You can use active dry yeast, you can use instant yeast, which is what I have. Doesn't really matter. But now that we just mix it together, we're going to let it sit first for about one and a half hours, two hours. If you go a little longer, it's not a big deal. So just to again, ensure that our cake is nice and smooth in texture and nice and light and airy, we're going to whisk together our uh, flour, cornstarch, and the baking soda, baking powder, and the salt together. So we're going to first sift it in using a, a proper sifter, which is rare for me because I don't like cleaning sifters. <laughs> but it really helps to aerate all the ingredients, which means just to incorporate more air to create a nice light and fluffy product at the end of it. And I'm going to sift it first initially into this bowl while we're waiting for our yeast and egg and sugar mixture to like blossom and bloom up but we're going to sift it again right before we add it into the rest of the ingredients so i'm starting out with my flour here and then i'm going to add our cornstarch our baking soda baking powder and salt and that's pretty much it this helps to incorporate everything too just mixing it together. Still have a few larger chunks of salt there, I can feel it. So I'm just gonna set that aside. And like I said, we're gonna wait for our yeast mixture to bloom and then we can just incorporate the both of them together. This is our yeast and sugar mixture with the eggs. It's super just foamy on top, so you know that yeast is activated now. It's been about Mm, one and a half, two hours, closer to two hours. 
So just to ensure that we have a nice smooth batter, I do want to strain it through some sort of sieve. Se 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 so now in that large bowl, we're going to basically just whisk in. I'm going to switch to my whisk here. Grab another sieve or strainer. You can sift it in, in two editions, three editions. Not, not super critical. Whisk, whisk, whisk until it's nice and smooth. Try your best not to over mix. But you do want, you do want it to be clump free. And our batter is just so nice and caramel colored. Almost like the color of my shirt. <laughs> looks pretty good. You don't want to over mix it just because it could potentially cause a, a tough cake. I just want to show you guys this is what I'm using and um, if you don't you know have a big wok like this maybe you can use like a flat flatter at least 12 inch skillet that has at least a few inches up the side so that way you can place put some water into it to steam our cake because this is traditionally a steamed sponge cake in China, Malaysia. So I have my wok, which is about maybe 14 to 16 inches, uh, probably closer to 14. And then I have my little rack here, which is about mm, half an inch tall, fits right in. And we have, of course, our bamboo steamer. And we're just gonna pour this batter into our steamer. Go ahead and give it a little shakeroo, shimmy, little shimmy. And we're not gonna cover it because when you buy one of these bamboo steamers, they usually have a lid that goes on top. But I've done it that way and it just doesn't come out. All right, so when your water is at a rolling boil, just be careful, put your steamer rack on there if you're using it. Place your cake on top and then put the lid on. So that way it can cook all the way through. Okay, so it's been half an hour. Obviously it's pretty hot. And I forgot to mention, but I'm gonna turn my timer off here. But maybe about, I don't know, 20 to 25 minutes into the whole process of steaming your cake. i turn my heat off here. Um, you might notice that some of the water runs out underneath the cake. And so, of course, you need enough water to steam our cake. Uh, but you can see just how, how much it's really blossomed. It's beautiful. I love that dome. <laughs> and so I'm going to carefully just remove my cake from our pan and just let it cool down. Actually, I'm sure the dim sum restaurants, they probably serve it pretty fresh and warm, you know, straight out of the steamer so let's go try it here it is oh yeah look at that nice and light pillowy soft when I just press into it gently <laughs> it kind of bounces back really nice mm, I'm so excited and it smells so good mmm it almost smells like it's like it's baked but the molasses is really strong because of course we did use dark brown sugar. So we're gonna gently, this is why the parchment paper is a godsend because you lift it straight out, peel it back I'm using a little paring knife here. It's especially good when it's fresh and still piping hot. Mm. It almost forms this thin, layer of skin, so to speak, on the outside. Did I cut all the way through? Let's see. Oh yeah. Oh, look at that. I didn't cut all the way through, my bad. Very good. Definitely a textural thing, because you can see mm, how soft, fluffy, and fine the crumb is. 
the squeeze test is always a good indicator of a good ma lai gao. So I'll hold it up here like this and I'll just squeeze in between two hands. <laughs> Gentle, even pressure, but it springs right back up. Mm. Not too sweet. I almost taste the yeast, which is kind of interesting. It's more cake-like in texture than, you know, traditional style bread, even though there's yeast in it. Definitely more like a cake texture. So very interesting. You can only imagine back in the day or maybe even some parts in China where commercial yeast is not available and they probably still use um, like a traditional style yeast, which is just a fermentation of flour and water. Basically a sourdough starter, right? What everyone's into nowadays, <laughs> making sourdough bread at home. Let me know what you think in the comments below, as well as subscribe for new recipes every week and make sure to turn on that notification bell as well to get notified every time I post a new recipe. I'll see you guys back here next time. Take care, bye.